Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another bright new day. It is Friday morning, the day before we celebrate God's wonderful act of sending His Son, our Savior, into the world. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. continues 
on page 33 of our opening sentence and continues on page 35 and following. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His love and mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this point where we make ourselves right with God. We bring before God those things that we have done that we ought not to have done. The things we didn't do that cried out for us to do as God's people. And even the thoughts that were not worthy of us. Let us therefore bring these before God and ask for God's forgiveness. As we pray together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to the Psalms appointed. And this morning we have Psalm 45 and Psalm 46. Psalm 45 begins on page 525. We will recite the Psalms together. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips because God has blessed you forever. Strap your sword upon your thigh, O mighty warrior, in your pride and in your majesty. Ride out and conquer in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your right hand will show you marvelous things. Your arrows are very sharp, O mighty warrior. The peoples are falling at your feet, and the king's enemies are losing heart. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces make you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of Ophir. Here, O daughter, consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master. Therefore, do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. In embroidered apparel, she is brought to the king. 
after her the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought and enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Continue with Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make a dough, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we've come to our first reading, and we read from the book of the prophet Baruch. We are reading from chapter 4 verse 36 to chapter 5, verse 9. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the joy that is coming to you from God. Look, your children are coming, whom you sent away. They are coming gathered from east and west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height. Look towards the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level the ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. We continue then with the Benedictus on page 40 of our Books of Common Prayer. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You've come to your people and set them free. You've raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, 
holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our reading from the second reading, that is, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we will reflect on this passage from Matthew, and in general, on God's wonderful act of love in sending his son into the world. And we pray that God will be with us in the midst of our reflection this morning. So, we're reading today from that section of Matthew which describes Joseph being visited by the angel and being told that he must not put Mary away but he must take her for his wife. Today as we begin we give God thanks and praise for indeed God has acted. God has acted and as we said in the Benedictus God has raised up for us a mighty savior and we give God thanks for his wonderful, wonderful act of love in sending his son. Fulfilling the promise, as the Benedictus reminds us, the promise made you know, very, a very long time before, that God would intervene into this world to save his people. We know now that God was speaking about all people, not just the Jews, but all people. So today, you know, we remember Mary and Joseph, whom God used to be the parents of the one who was to be born of a woman, Jesus, Savior of the world. And so, when the fullness of time had come, as Paul writes in Galatians, God needed to have a mother and a father. And we know that that God used Mary and Joseph, and we want to reflect on, on the faith of these two people. Quite ordinary people, really. Joseph, a normal carpenter, Mary, you know, simple, young, very young woman, of course, faithful. That's the word we need to, to pay attention to. Faithful people, but very ordinary people, and we need to remember that. So, first of all, Mary. You know, her situation, 
been engaged to Joseph and we are told that being betrothed or engaged as it says in those days was really like being already married except for a time living apart. So we saw, we see in this passage we read where Joseph is really described as her husband. You know, her husband Joseph. You know, so it's really much more than our current engagement as we, you know, that we call engagement nowadays. And they were living apart, yes, but Mary, as we said, was found to be with child before she had begun to live with her husband. And that's a scandal even today, so we could just imagine uh, in the time of Mary way, way back. But Mary, of course, had been visited by the angel Gabriel, and this, the messenger of God was putting it to her that she would be the mother of the one who was to be the savior of the world. And Mary couldn't understand it, you know, how can I, how can this happen? You know, I'm still a virgin and so on. And we could imagine she said even more, you know, to the angel, you know, I'm not, I'm not living with my husband. How is this going to happen? You know, what will, and what will people say? We could imagine all that she might have said. All the objections that today might have been raised. So Mary had to deal with this, you know, but the angel, you know, gave her, all the assurances that she would need. You know, she would, I guess many, we might say, many a Jewish girl, you know, being brought up in the scriptures, and knowing that God was planning to send the Messiah, had promised to send his Messiah, many may have imagined themselves being chosen by God to be the mother of that one who would be the Messiah. So here it was that perhaps a deep-seated dream of Mary was being fulfilled. But her problem, of course, would be to face all the shame and disgrace and scandal of being a mother before she actually lived with her husband. It would be a scandal and shame even in our time today. So it took, you can imagine, it took quite a lot from Mary. Yes, the angel was speaking to her. Yes, God was acting through her. Yes. She would be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Mary understood all that, but still the shame and scandal would await her. What, how will this all work out? The thing about it is that Mary, young as she was, stood you know, obedient. Let it be according to your word. That is the faith that Mary demonstrated. Mary believed God and she put herself to be the instrument of God's purposes. And that's the point that we have to remember, to be that faithful response, let it be with me according to your word. And then we go to Joseph, the same issue. Joseph had, when he realized that his fiance, more than fiance, his wife, because he's described as a husband, so when he realized his wife was pregnant, you can, you, we can just imagine again, it would be a scandal today, it would be a shame today, it would present a great struggle for the man even today, far less in those days. Small villages, small society, with its very strong customs. So Joseph struggled with this, but it says he was a decent man, honest man, believer, and he didn't want to disgrace Mary, so he wouldn't make a public scandal of it. I suppose in those days the man was entitled according to the society to, to, to do that. But no, Joseph wouldn't make a scandal of it. He decided, well, listen, I will, you know, this has happened, I will just put her away quietly, I will dismiss her quietly. In those days, you know, men can write a divorce, so maybe he can just write, just write a paper, and divorce her very quietly, and nobody would quite understand, perhaps. And the scandal, she can go away to another place, and, and the scandal will be mitigated. That was the option that Joseph himself was considering. But of course, God acted. God acted. God spoke to, him, to Joseph by an angel. Didn't say the name of the angel. And assured Joseph that really, you know, your wife Mary is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. It's not another man. It's by the Holy Spirit. She is going to bear a son. 
And that son is going to be called Jesus, which means Savior, because he will save your people from their sins. So again, God was making the same, you know, giving the same explanation to Joseph this time. Mary was to be the mother of the Savior of the world. He was to be the father. That was the way that God um, desired, that he must be the one who would be the father of this child. The child needs to grow up in the right home. And so he needed to play that very important role of being the father of this one, the Son of God, because Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit, the Son of God, who would be, grow up to become that savior that the scriptures spoke about going so far back in time. And Joseph again responded with faith. Joseph put aside his own concerns. You know, and Joseph believed God, trusted God, and responded, responded to God's request. So today, because of the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph, of course God would have found another way. But we can say that Mary and Joseph demonstrated the kind of faith and trust because it wasn't an easy situation for either of them. But it is demonstrated that, that faith and trust in God, that they would recognize that God would deal with the situation. God will work it all out in the way that is best for God. Both Mary and Joseph then responded. And it teaches us, of course, that God is, even today, we have that particular incident, very important incident in our history of faith, but God is still active today. God hasn't stopped after that you know, particular act of bringing his son into the world. God has continued to act. God, even in our time, in our place, in our situations, God is acting in all kinds of ways. Not all of them are the world transforming, of course. But God continues to act. God continues to work his purposes out in time, in history, in our time. And God uses human agents, his people, to respond to his purposes as he calls them to play the role that he needs them to play as he seeks to do his work of transforming the world, transforming people. God needs you and I, believers, or we who say we are believers, God needs us to respond faithfully. God needs us, God needs the human agents Yes, God can wave a magic wand, and that's somehow we believe that that's the way God acts, but actually most of the time, God acts through you and through me. And so when he calls us, we have to respond to, so that we don't frustrate. We, I should be careful how I say this, but we do not act as you know, reluctant persons, as God calls us. We do not um, delay God's you know, God's desires, God's purposes. We are not stumbling blocks in any way. So we need, of course, to discern that it is God who is calling us to a particular task, to play a particular role. And that, that act of discernment is very important, of course, for us, to discern whether it is God calling us. It might be, in this case, Jesus, Joseph, an angel appeared to him in a dream. So we might have dreamed something. God is putting the certain th thoughts into our hearts and we see something that needs to be done, for example. God may be using other people to call us into a particular role that he wants us to play. And yes, we have to be convinced about it and we can do that by talking to God, by praying, by, by seeking further signs and so on. But the point is we should not be looking to delay so that we can get out of, of that particular call. Rather, we want to confirm. But having received that confirmation, we have to respond. We cannot be reluctant. You know, always finding, we are very good at finding excuses. 
And we have to be wary of you know, these quick excuses we shot, we shot out. You know, I'm not able, I don't have the time, I don't have the skill. You know, this is too hard. You know, yes, when God calls us, even though God is calling us, it doesn't mean to say the task is going to be an easy one. But if God is calling us, he has a, a reason. And we must be persons who are not just throwing up excuses, you know, but really ready to listen to God and trust God and respond. There's so many tasks to be done in the world and in the church today. And we need, God needs us you know, to act in the world, even within our country, you know, in our communities, to act to make a difference. We complain about how things are, where things are going. But are we ready to respond to God's call as he puts these ideas into our heads, as he calls, as, as he gets other people to speak to us, as he might speak to us in a dream perhaps, in our thoughts? Are we ready to respond so that we can make a difference where we are? That God's purposes might be worked out through us because God is active and he needs you and me. He needs our hands, our feet, our minds and hearts so that his purposes might be. God wants to make a change, and he wants to use us for his purposes. He used Mary and Joseph to transform the world, to raise up a mighty savior, so that you and I and all people over all times and places could receive salvation. And of course for us, most of us, <laughs> we, we, we call it a much more modest task. Nevertheless, important as God puts it all together to effect his purposes in the world. So we may, may we be faithful, faithful to God's call. And so God might use us to continue his saving work in the world. The Lord be with you. And so we continue as we turn to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue as we pray together the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer as we pray together the collect for today on page 158. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son Jesus Christ that is coming may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We continue in prayer. We pray for ourselves as God's people in this place. We pray for faithfulness, that we will respond in faith and trust in God's goodness and in God's purposes when God calls us to particular tasks, when we are convinced that God has called us to particular tasks. We pray for God's peace in the world. And we pray that we might be agents in our own circumstances of that peace. We pray for peace in all those countries of the world where there is strife, civil war, oppression, all kinds of uprisings that bring pain and, and 
death and grief to others. We have countries where there are all kinds of natural disasters taking place. Uh, we pray for countries which are overcome with various kinds of diseases, and in particular today, most countries of the world are grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, worldwide pandemic. We continue to pray, Lord, that you would inspire all those professionals and all those countries of the world who are dealing with this pandemic. You inspire them, Lord, in the measures they take so that in their communication with people, so that people will do all those things, Lord, which are needed to bring an end to this pandemic. Personal, the personal habits, for example. We pray for our own country in Trinidad and Tobago dealing with this pandemic. And today we have a lot of anger and debate about whether the government should, should impose mandatory vac vaccination or whether there should be consequences for people who do not vaccinate. We pray, Lord, that as a country we come to some kind of understanding, some kind of consensus as to what we need to do considering always the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for God's church worldwide, in every country of the world where God's people exist. May we have that positive influence in the society as we each exercise the love of God in our, each, in our own spheres of influence. We pray for the leaders of God's church worldwide. We pray today for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, who is the head of the Anglican Communion, for the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, Archbishop of the Church in the province of the West Indies, for all our bishops in our various dioceses of the Church in the province of the West Indies, we pray especially for our own Bishop of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, our Bishop Claude. May God continue to bless him and his healing work continue on his wife. We pray for all our clergy and all our people in our parishes. May, may we be, as we said earlier, may we be faithful people, may we be seen to be faithful people, responding to God's call to us to serve and to make a difference in our environment. Today we pray for the people of our country in all our various situations, those who have lost their loved ones through the COVID-19 situation, pandemic, those who are sick in other ways and are crying out for healing. Pray for our senior citizens, Father, especially those who are unable to care for themselves and need to be cared for by others. We particularly pray for those who have, don't, have, don't have the support that they need and have to somehow fend for themselves. Pray for the families of our nation the homes in which our people live. May your presence be within those homes, Lord, to bring your peace and love. May parents, we pray for our parents as they seek to bring up their children in the way that they should go. We pray, Lord, for that wisdom and understanding. We pray for those who are in all kinds of situations of need this morning, Lord, we lift them up before you. We ask, Lord, that your people will be touched that we will show ourselves to be looking on the world with eyes of compassion, that we might reach out with a helping hand to those who are in need, particularly at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.